This video is to talk about the improvements and enhancements that have come along with the introduction of the B version of the Tektronix MDO 4000. Uh, the, the Tektronix MDO 4000 is a mixed domain oscilloscope, four analog input channels up to one gigahertz of bandwidth, 16 digital inputs, and a three or six gigahertz spectrum analyzer, all time correlated. The B version has really enhanced the performance on the RF side in a number of different ways. The low frequency corner of the MDO uh, previously was 50 kilohertz. That's been pushed down now to 9 kilohertz. And that's to better meet the needs for doing things like uh, EMI diagnostic work and things like that. Another improvement that was made was an improvement in phase noise. Here's an example plot. Uh, taken with a low phase noise source looking at a 1 megahertz span on the previous version of the MDO and that same signal source on the MDO 4000B. You can see the dramatic improvement, 20 dB or so, improvement of close-in phase noise. Some other improvements that have been made are improvements to the dynamic guaranteed dynamic range. That's been improved by about 5 dB. And also uh, an improvement in the way that the RF path is calibrated. It's calibrated now both in amplitude and phase, so to give much better response, uh, much better results for wideband captures and things like that. But to me, uh, there's a number of other uh, user uh, enhancements and things like that, but the most exciting one for me is a live link between the RF capture in the MDO and vector signal analysis that could be run on an external PC. And what that does is it turns the MDO now into a wide band, one gigahertz wide vector signal analyzer at a very low cost. So let me show you what the, I'm talking about with that. Let's first examine what we're looking at on the MDO screen before we connect into the vector signal analysis software. So down on the spectrum plot, we're looking essentially at a, the spectrum of a QPSK modulated RF signal that's just being generated by this little test board down here. That's being coupled into uh, the spectrum analyzer input and then we're looking at the spectrum of that. On the time domain portion of the display up here we've got a number of different signals. Uh, this orange trace up here is the phase versus time or the PMD mod of that signal. And in fact if we do a single capture here so it's not jumping around on us we can actually see the four various phase steps that the phase is going through during the modulation. You can also see the change in the amplitude of the RF signal during the modulation as well. I've also am probing on a different board here a couple of different signals that I've got shown up here as a, a bursted clock signal, another one up here, just to re-illustrate the fact that we can capture RF signals over time along with other analog and digital signals and look at the choreography of all of them over time. But again, the real power now with the, the B version of this instrument is being able to tie the RF capture that we're doing on the MDO over to vector signal analysis for a more detailed analysis offline. Let me show you what I mean by that. So the connection between the MDO and the PC can be done a couple of different ways. I've got the PC connected up through my LAN but it can also be connected directly via USB uh, to a laptop or even directly through a LAN cable. So I've got it connected through my LAN. So within the laptop here uh, on signal view, I can go tell this that I want to create a live link, get the mouse over here, create a live link to the instrument and uh, it's already found uh, the MDO. So I'll connect up to the MDO. Once it connects up to the MDO, we'll just get a notice that tells me that the, we're connected up to the MDO and the RF uh, portion of the MDO is now being controlled by this signal view package. And now I can actually see the same spectrum that we were looking at uh, previously is now coming over here. But now I've also got the ability of looking at uh, other characteristics of this RF signal here uh, over time. So selecting other views and other displays is actually very easy. We just bring up a displays uh, selection dialog box 
and I can add displays such as a time overview which lets me control how much time I want to record and analyze. Let's add say a phase versus time and amplitude versus time because those are similar to the displays that we were looking at on the MDO. If I hit OK those displays will all toggle in or tile into the display. So there's the same spectrum we were looking at. There's the phase versus time display we were looking at and here's the amplitude versus time that we were looking at as well. So right now this is all very similar to what we were looking at on the MDO itself in terms of uh, the various displays. But we can take this a lot further. Since this is a QPSK modulated signal, we can actually go demodulate that and look at what the, the modulation characteristics are. In order to bring up some of the modulation displays, we just go scroll down to the general purpose digital modulation display selection. And let's add, say, a constellation diagram, maybe an eye diagram, and a symbol table. And I'll hit OK to add those displays. So now I've added those displays in here. And now we can actually take a look at what the modulation constellation diagram looks like. Uh, how tight are the symbol locations here? What does the eye diagram look like? What, is the, you know, what are the actual symbols that are being sent? So doing a more complete uh, analysis of what's going on with that signal over time. And we can continue to add or subtract displays at will. For example, if we add, say, error vector magnitude versus time, this will allow us to look at how the error from the ideal location in time in the constellation is varying. And uh, if we start to see a pattern or a problem or something in here, we'll be able to relate that back to whatever's going on in any of the other domains. And then also be able to take that timing information back and maybe use that to help go debug things on the scope side. So, uh, you know, in my mind, this uh, the ability to bring in the full capability of vector signal analysis from general purpose analog and digital modulation, RF measurements, you know, ch channel power, ACPR, spectrum emission mask, things like that, to more complex analysis like even wireless LAN uh, analysis. We can do all of that now using the spectrum analyzer in the MDO as the source for all of the RF signals. So it really adds a whole other dimension or several dimensions of analysis capability beyond what the MDO brings in the first place by itself. One uh, maybe practical example of using the MDO and the link to SignalView PC maybe for maybe integrating a wireless LAN module into a system. Here I've got a single shot capture that's looking at a couple of different signals, a little bursted clock here, a I squared C bus and the decode of that, and this display is showing me RF power versus time of a wireless LAN signal, in this case which is at 5.25 gigahertz. This happens to be a 160 megahertz wide 802.11 AC uh, signal burst. So what I can see here now is the time correlation between this local board bus activity and this 802.11 RF signal and to see what's going on with these signals over time. I can also look at the spectrum at any point in time by simply panning the spectrum time back and forth with the pan control so I can see the spectrum's unique kind of uh, shape if you will right at the very beginning during the training fields okay and then if I walk my way through I can look at what the spectrum is doing at any point in time through that record. So, uh, so very useful for debugging you know, from that standpoint, but you can't tell from this display if there's any problems with error vector magnitude or some other issues that might be going on during the packet as a result of some of these other signals that might be going on coincident with it. This is where tying the RF capture into signal view can really help. Okay, I've made the connection from the MDO into signal view and made a capture. And here I can see that same amplitude versus time of the RF burst. I can see the spectrum. I've also got a spectrogram of that entire capture. So I can literally walk through and look at what the spectrum is doing at any point in time. And we're also looking at a constellation diagram, in this case error vector magnitude by symbol and by subcarrier, and then the decoded symbol table. 
And the nice thing is everything is time correlated here. So for example, I've got a, a marker sitting at the, towards the very beginning here. You can see that marker location here in time. If I go move that marker to different symbols, okay, we can see that moving through the symbols in the EVM plot. We can also see it moving through the symbols in the symbol table. If I move move to a different subcarrier, I'm going to grab this marker here and move it to a different subcarrier. We can see that move in the table here. If I slide over, we'll see that different subcarrier there. The marker also moves in the frequency domain. So all the markers are time correlated. Even in the uh, constellation diagram. So for example, if we zoom in, let's just zoom in on one of these constellation points. Okay, let's go pick one of these to zoom in on. And let's say, for example, I wanted to look at that particular outlier right here. You know, there's a little location there. I can go grab this marker and drop him right on that. And now I can actually see what subcarrier it was on. I can see where it was in the symbol, uh, in the what symbol it was on, what subcarrier it's on, where it is in the time domain, and really kind of zero in on those types of anomalies. The nice thing too is that by being able to see these things versus subcarrier and versus time, you can look to see if there are periodic or you know, deterministic variations in things like EVM that you might be able to then track back down to other analog and digital signals that might be interfering with the way that particular signal is being generated. So a really powerful tool set for looking at uh, you know, complex modulated RF signals and how well that module or that functionality integrates into your system design. And one of the other displays available to us is the wireless LAN summary table. Let me maximize that. This gives you all kinds of information about you know, what standard was being used, the bandwidth being used, the power in the burst, peak to average ratio, uh, frequency error, and how the, what the pilots are doing, the pilot error. Also, information about error vector magnitude across the pilots and the data, as well as uh, you know through the burst itself and where the maximum EVM lies, and also information about the packet structure itself, um, the, the short and long training fields, signal fields, and a lot of the other uh, pertinent measurement characteristics on those fields as well. So uh, a lot of detailed information that you can get in terms of physical layer uh, and protocol analysis for this wireless LAN burst and then really being able to time, time domain correlate all the different measurements amongst themselves as well as being able to recognize where things are say in a particular location in a burst and be able to use that to go back and look at what's going on in the time domain on the scope and to see if there are other signals on your system or your board that might be influencing influencing the way that signal is being generated. Anyway, thank you for watching.